Can you see anything, Jerry? No, dear. This alley is like the inside of a pocket. Well, I can't. <gasps> Darling, there's something at my feet. It's not something at your feet, Pam. It's someone. It's someone who's dead. Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Alice Frost and Joseph Curtin. Listen as Pam and Jerry solve the mystery, The Heavenly Body. The Café Emile is a small but fashionable supper club. Its atmosphere is French, its food is delicious, and its prices are outrageous. Yet it's a place that most New Yorkers who can possibly afford it want to visit at least once. And so tonight, Pam and Jerry are entering the Café Emile for the first time. Little aware that this first visit will gladly be their last. Bonsoir, Monsieur Madame. Bonsoir. Uh, good evening. We have a reservation, Mr. and Mrs. Noah. Uh, oui, Mr. and Mrs. Emile. Uh, yeah. Ah, Monsieur Zachary. Bonsoir, Monsieur. Your table is ready, Monsieur. Thanks, I'll find it. And Emile, when Aunt Coleman is through with her number, tell her I want to talk to her. Oui, Monsieur. Oh, pardon, Mr. North, but your table will not be available for a few minutes. If you and Madame would care to wait in the bar, Monsieur, I will call you. Oh, thank you. Come on, dear. Did you recognize him? Him? Who, oh, dear? The, the man Emil just spoke to. That was Sam Zachary. The newspaper columnist? Yes. Oh, here's the cocktail lounge. Oh, no wonder he was getting the red carpet treatment. Uh, I'll get the door, dear. Shall we sit at the bar? Mm-hmm. Let's. Uh, did you read his column yesterday? Zachary's? Mm -hmm. No, why? It was about that gang killing of that big gambler. You remember, Jerry. His name was Jack Rawlings. But that was two years ago. It hardly comes under the heading of news anymore. Except that Zachary said in his column that he'd found out the name of the person who lured Jack Rawlings out of hiding for the men who killed him. The finger man in the case, hmm? Mm -hmm, that's right. And Sam Will Zachary it be, said... Mr. North? Well, for... Hey, Pam, look who's behind the bar, Al Hello. Stacy. How are you, Mr. North? Well, fine, fine. And you? Okay. Pam, you remember Al, the bartender in that little place around the corner from my office? Oh, Hello, Mr. Hello, I Al. haven't seen you in a couple of years, Al. Where have you been? In a hospital out west. Oh, I heard you were sick, but I didn't know it was that serious. How are you now? Oh, I'll live. Uh, what, what are you folks drinking? Martinis. Mm hmm. Oh, look, Al, why don't you come. Al, a... Al, could I speak to you a minute? Oh, I, uh. Sure, sure, Miss Coleman. Uh, Miss Coleman, this is Mr. and Mrs. North. How do you do? How do, you do Hello. Uh, Mr. North, your table is ready? Uh, better cancel those drinks, Al. Uh, we'll see you later. Sure. Uh, happy to have met you, Miss Coleman. <laughs> We're looking forward to hearing you sing. <laughs> Thank you. Al, Sam Zachary's here. Take it easy, honey. We figured he would be. But he wants to talk to so me. Oh, let him talk. I can't. Al, call Fred Benedict. No. Al, please, you've Hold got Hold it, to... baby. Zachary. Hi, Miss Coleman. I guess you didn't get my message, huh? I got it. Look, uh, Mr. Zachary, Miss Coleman's busy, so it's why don't you... It's all right, Al. Go make that phone call, will you? Please. Okay. What's with you and the barkeep, Miss Coleman? Nothing. Too bad. Thought I might have an item for the column. Guess I'll just have to string along with this. With what? This. My copy for tomorrow's edition. Read it. Go on, go on, read it. Attention, New York police. The Jack Rawlings kill was set up by a woman who lured Rawlings to his death with a telephone call. The call was made from Jefferson 87481, a number listed to Nan Coleman, now a featured singer at the Swank Cafe Emile. You're not going to print this. Uh-huh. Just like that. Unless you give me something better. <sighs> something like, why were you paid to finger Jack Rawlings, how much you were paid, and most important... Who paid you? Was it Fred Benedict? Leave me alone. Come back here. Miss Coleman, come. <sighs> okay, kid. Do it the hard way. Wait a minute, Mr. Zachary. Well? I'd like to... like to buy you a drink. Sure. What'll it be? It's your bottle. Mind if I turn this on? What's that? Miss Coleman's song piped in from the dining room. Listen. She's good. She's the best. Look, Mr. Zachary, I'd, I'd like to tell you a story. What kind of a story? About a guy and a gal in love. Everybody loves a love story. Let's hear it. Well, the guy, he, he's just a guy. He sees nothing. He's just a bartender hoping maybe someday he'll have a little place of his own. That's all. You. But the girl, well, she's really got it. 
looks, a voice, everything. Everything but the break. She's singing her heart out in every crummy beer joint that'll let her go near the microphone, hoping that, well, you know, maybe someday she'll be singing in a place like this. So the gals can't call. Go on. Well, she's beginning to get there. Slow but sure, and, and, and things are starting to look rosy when, bang, the guy gets sick and he needs dough. He needs a lot of dough for six months, a year, maybe longer in Arizona. Otherwise, it's curtains. But, well, the, the guy hasn't got that kind of dough. So the gal gets it for him, right? That's right. That's right. She does a dirty, rotten, filthy thing, and she knows it. She runs the chance of ruining her whole life, and she knows that, too. But she gets the dough. Not, not for herself. Not one penny for herself, but for the guy. So? So, don't you think a gal like that deserves a break, Mr. Zachary? Now, let me tell you a story, my friend. The story of a guy named Jack Rawlings. Rawlings wasn't a pillar of society, that's true, but it's irrelevant. He trusted a dame and wound up lying between two garbage cans in an alley with six slugs in them. Does a girl like that deserve a break? You can turn that off now. Yeah. Thanks for the drink. Sorry I can't use the story. Wait. Well? You don't know me, do you? I'm Mona Rawlings. Jack Rawlings' wife? His widow. Okay, his widow. So what do you want? The name of the person who called Jack that night. Now, look, Mrs. Rawlings. It was a woman, wasn't it? I know that much. Jack wouldn't have gone out to meet a man that night. Who is she, Mr. Zachary? I got something for her. Some of the same thing Jack got. You're drunk. Sure, I'm drunk. Been drunk for two years. I'm going to stay drunk until... Listen, Mrs. Rawlings. That's a gun you've got in your handbag. I advise you to take it home and put it to bed. Then do the same thing with yourself. Who is she? Good night, Mrs. Rawlings. Lieutenant Wigan speaking. This is Sam Zachary, Lieutenant. Well, Zachary, I, uh, I've been trying to get in touch with you about that item you had in your column about Jack Rawlings. That's what I'm calling about, Lieutenant. Can you meet me at the Cafe Emil? Oh, sure, right away. Something wrong? Not yet. And that's why I want you here. To see that things stay that way. Pam, dear, what's the matter with you? Jerry, I- I've been thinking. You could have done that much cheaper at home, though. <laughs> Don't you want to know what I've been thinking? At these prices, it had better be good. Remember when we came in, Jerry? We heard Sam Zachary asking Neil to have Miss Coleman come to his table. Well? Then just a couple of minutes later, Miss Coleman came into the cocktail lounge, uh, acting very nervous, uh, wanting to talk to Al Stacy. What are you getting at? And then, while Emil was showing us to our table, I saw Sam Zachary go into the cocktail lounge. I was wondering if there could be any connection between all that and, and the column that Zachary wrote about the Jack Rawlings murder. Pam, dear, you're feeling your dreams. But, Jerry, now don't stop you... stop imagining things and let's dance. Dance? Mm-hmm. Darling, this is a rumba. Well, I can rumba. <laughs> now who's imagining things? Uh, this is Miss Coleman's dressing room. Thanks, Emil. Not at all, monsieur. Who is it? Sam Zachary. Open the door, Mrs. Stacy. What do you mean, Mrs. Stacy? Did Al tell you that... He told me a story. I guess the rest. That's why I decided to give you another chance. I told you to leave me alone. I know one of Fred Benedict's torpedoes killed Rawlings. Get out. The police know it. The whole town knows it. But you're the only one who can prove it. So let me hear you say it, kid. Let me hear you say Fred Benedict paid me to telephone Jack Rawlings and... Get out. Give me that gun. I'm warning you, Mr. Zachary. If you don't get out... Give it to me. Let go of me. Drop it. Let go. Drop it, you little fool. Mr. Zachary. You crazy little... Mr. Zachary! Mr. Zachary! Dan. Dan. Al! Dan, what's oh, happened? Al. I heard you. Sam Zachary. I didn't mean to do it, Al. Close the door. It was a 
an accident, Al. He grabbed for the gun and started twisting my arm to make me drop it, and... Al, is he dead? Yeah. Oh, oh don't, Al. baby, don't. Please, honey, don't. Now, get a hold of yourself. Come on, now. That's better. Now, look, where's the gun? Over there on the floor. Okay. Now, you've got another number coming up, haven't you? Oh, yes, but I can't You've go got out. to. You've got to go out there and act just as though nothing has happened. What are you going to do? I'm going to get Zachary out of here. How? Never mind. Now, get out there for your number before someone comes looking oh, for you. But oh, I'll please, please, honey, would you let me handle this, please? All right, darling. But I want you to know you don't have to do this for me. You did something for me once that you didn't have to do, remember? All right, now, get going. Man. Oh, Mr. Benedict. I was just coming back to see you. Al called and said Sam Zachary was... What's the matter with him? Sam Zachary's dead. Huh? I killed him. What? Why, you little... Where is he? In my dressing room. Al's in there. He's going to try to get Zachary out. Where are you going? To do my next number. Al made me. He's right. All right, go on. I'll go in and see if we can clean up the mess you made. You're not leaving already, monsieur. It is early. Not for a working man, Emil. Jerry. Hmm? Darling, look who just came in. Bill Wagon. Bill, what are you doing here? Well, Sam Zachary, you know, the columnist asked me to meet him here. He said oh. he'd be at the bar. He wants to see you about the Rawlings case, doesn't he, Bill? Now, look, Pam, don't start asking a lot of questions about something that isn't your business. Be seeing you, Bill. All right, take care of yourselves, you two. Bye. Same to you. Holy smoke, Pam. Why must Jerry, you always... Look, over there at the check room. Al Stacy. Yes. Oh, but this is Mr. Zachary's hat and coat. I know, I know. He asked you to get them for him. Now hand them over, will you, Marie? Oh, well, well, all right, here. Thank you. Something awfully strange about that, Jerry. There certainly is. Why should Zachary want his hat and coat when he's meeting Bill in the bar? And look where Al Stacy's going, Jerry. Out, out that side door. Must lead to an alley or something. I'm going to get Bill. No, there isn't time. We've got to see what Al Stacy's up to. Come on. But Pam. Come on, darling. Here's the door. We'll open it. Leads to an alley. A very dark alley. Al Stacy must have gone back that way, away from the street, or we could see him. Well, you obviously aren't going to be satisfied until we have a look, so let's get it over with. You better close the door. I got it. Come on. I can't see a thing, Jerry. Can you? If it'll make you feel better, dear. No. Darling, this is a blind alley. Mm -hmm. In more ways than one. Well, then, if Val Stacy didn't go out to the street, where did he... What's the matter? Jerry. Darling, there's something here. Where? Right at my feet. I almost stumbled over it. There's a match. Wait till I strike it. <gasps> it's a man. Sam Zachary. Jerry, he looks like he... He is. He's dead. Oh, no. Now, steady, darling. Are you all right? Yes. Okay. Now, look, you go in and get Bill. I'll wait here. All right. And leave that door open. I will, dear. Oh, for the love... The last match in the... <laughs> Sorry, Mr. North. You better save your sympathy for us, Al. Now, let's get out of here. Get out? What about Zachary? We've got to move him out of here. Don't be a fool. What good'll that do? The guy's seen him, so is the woman. Come on. Look, what are we gonna do? I've got to make a phone call. No, no, leave the door open. You and Nan meet me in our dressing room. Okay. Nan. Ow. Look, baby, get back to your dressing room. I'll be, I'll be back there in a minute. Well, what about Sam? Zachary? Never mind. Just get back to your dressing room. Miss Coleman. Oh, who are you? The name's Rawlings. Mona Rawlings. Well, what do you want? I'm looking for Sam Zachary. He he isn't here. So I see. Where is he? I don't know. Well, it doesn't make much difference, because sitting here just now, I got to thinking. Thinking what? That you fit. You and Zachary had your heads together at the bar, then he came back here to see you. Yeah, you fit all right. Like a glove. You're just the type Jack would have trusted. I don't know what you're talking about. I hope you don't, because if you do, 
and I ever find out you do, I'll kill you. I'll kill you like they killed Jack. Like stepping on a bug, I'll kill you. Remember that. What are you doing in here? Al, uh, what's it to you, bartender? Get out. What are you getting so excited about? I saw you acting up in the bar with Sam Zachary tonight, Mrs. Rawlings. So I still want to know what you're getting so excited about. Me and Miss Coleman were just having a friendly little chat. Weren't we, Miss Coleman? You heard me. Out. Remember, Miss Coleman. Like a bug. Al, she suspects... Never mind her. Listen, baby, there's something I want to tell you, so listen. Listen real hard. Mr. and Mrs. North found Sam Zachary's body out in the alley. Oh, Al. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Take... Who's there? Benedict. Come in. I just called my lawyer. He's ready for trouble, but we've got to have our story straight. Now, look. Here's what we're going to do. Take it easy, Benedict. Everything's under control. What do you mean? I don't understand, Al. This is the way it's going to be, honey. I killed Zachary. You? Zachary found out I was the one who put the finger on Jack Rawlings. Oh, no, Al, And I no. killed him, and now I'm going out to the cops and admit it. Oh, I won't let you do That's that. It's the only way, baby. Somebody's got to take the fall for this. Then I'll take it. I got us into it. And this. why? You did it for me. Oh, well. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to do something for you. Just a minute, Stacy. How do I figure in on this? Don't worry. You'll be protected. How do I know? I'll tell you how you know. I wouldn't walk across the street to spit on you if you were on fire, Benedict. I hate your insides. But I got to protect you to protect Nan, so just relax and enjoy the free ride. So long, honey. No, Al. I won't let you do this. I won't. I won't. Shut up, you fool. Let him go. Oh, Take Al. it easy, Benedict. Try any rough stuff with her and I'll... I'll relax, honey. Oh, please, Al. Darling, you mustn't. Not for me. I won't let you. You better get her out of here, Benedict. Sure. Al! Emil. Uh, Al, oh, mon Dieu. Al, what is going on? Mr. Zachary is found dead in the alley. Mr. North, he's found hurt. Yeah, yeah, I know. And the police, they are looking for you, Al. Well, tell them to look in your office, Emil. I'll be waiting for them in there. Look, Lieutenant, I've told you I killed Sam Zachary, and I've told you why. Now, what more do you want? The name of the man who paid you to finger Jack Rawlings. I don't know. He didn't give me a name. Oh, what he look like? Like a million guys. Could you identify him if you saw him? Maybe. Maybe not. Okay, Stacy, we'll continue this later downtown. Uh, Donahue, stay and keep Stacy from getting lonesome. Okay, Lieutenant. Where are you going, Bill? To talk to the medical examiner. How do you feel, Jerry? Like I had a different head for each day of the week. Uh, that was a nasty bump you got. Look, you two go on home, will Bill, you? Bill, do, do you think Al Stacy's telling the truth? Uh, about killing Sam Zachary, I mean. Why would he lie about a thing like that, Pam? Well, he could be trying to protect someone. Well, he could be, I suppose. Well, then don't... Pam, dear, my head is killing me. Let's go. Good night, Bill. Yeah, I'll be in touch with you. Darling, I wish you'd let me finish telling Bill... You can that. write him a letter when we get home, but dear. But I think... Jerry, look... This is Nan Coleman's dressing room. So what? Hey, hey, Pam, what are you doing? Darling, when we met Miss Coleman this evening, I noticed that she was wearing a gold wedding band. Oh, what's that got to do and with... And Al Stacy's wearing one just like it. You think Al Stacy and Nan Coleman are married? Yes, dear, and to each other. And Al Stacy may be protecting... Look, the door opens. What an unusual door. Pam, would Ms. you... Miss Coleman? Miss uh, Coleman? <gasps> Darling, knock over by the dressing table. Good Lord. What's happened to her? She's dead. Someone stabbed her in the back. Here's Bill, Jerry. Well, Pam, you were right. Al Stacy was protecting someone. Yeah. Nan Coleman? Yeah, Jerry. And they were married, weren't they? That's right. And Stacy says now that his wife sold Jack Rawlings to Fred Benedict. Fred Benedict? Oh. Well, you see, Benedict and Rawlings used to be partners. Gambling, narcotics, any other racket that'd make him a buck. But the town got too small for both of them, and with Nan Coleman's help, Benedict got Rawlings before Rawlings could get Benedict. Mm. How's Al Stacy taking Nan Coleman's death? Pretty hard, Jerry. If he ever gets his hands on the... Come in. Here's a guy we thought you'd want to talk to, Lieutenant. Oh, speak of the devil. Come in, Benedict. What's this all about, Lieutenant? Oh, just relax, Benedict. You'll find out. You got any more celebrities out there, don't you? Yeah. We grabbed a dame trying to duck out the back way. 
Says her name's Mona Rawlings. Mona Rawlings. Well, well, well. <laughs> yeah, we're really slumming tonight, aren't we? Send her in, too, will you? Okay, sister. Inside. Okay, okay. Keep your big paws off me. I can walk without your help. Okay, Donahue. Tell uh, Emil we're letting him off the hook. And the rest of his guests can go on home. Huh? Now, look, Lieutenant. I'll just relax, Benedict. Stacy, come in here. Benedict. Benedict. Yeah. Hey, Stop, it, it, Stacey. Uh, uh, Stop it, Stacy. Uh, Stop it, Stacy. Get off of me. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's better. Now, sit down. Crazy fool. What's the matter with him? What'd you expect him to do, Benedict? Pin a medal on you for murdering his wife? I didn't kill Nan Coleman. Why should I? To keep her quiet. About what? About the fact that Al was taking the fall for her for Sam Zachary's death. We figure she wanted to talk to save Al, and you killed her. Well, you're figuring wrong because Nan Coleman was alive when I left her dressing room. Wasn't she, Mrs. Rawlings? How, how should I know? You were standing right outside when I left. Then you went in and killed her. No. You've been blabbing all over town for two years about how you'd kill the people responsible for Jack's murder if you ever found out who they were for sure. Well, you heard Nan Coleman and me talking, so you did find out, and you killed her. That's not true. I didn't go into the dressing room after you came out. I didn't hear anything. Are you sure of that, Mona? Yes. And you don't sound too sure. Well, I am. And so am I. You? Pam, dear, no one asked you whether Please, he... Jerry. Bill Mona Rawlings is telling the truth. How do you know, Pam? Yes, dear, how do you know? Because Fred Benedict's still alive. Look, Bill, if Mona Rawlings had overheard Nan Coleman and Fred Benedict and, and knew that they were responsible for her husband's death, why would she let Fred Benedict walk right past her and, and kill only Nan Coleman? It, it doesn't make sense, Bill. If Mona Rawlings killed her uh, to avenge her husband's death, then she would have killed Fred Benedict, too. Oh, no, Bill. Fred Benedict killed Nan Coleman. That's a lie. You don't believe this, Dame Lieutenant. You're a gambler, Benedict. Want to bet? <laughs> Emil? Oui? Uh, Emil, uh, this is Mrs. North. I I'm sorry to bother you like this at three in the morning. Don't apologize, Pam. Just tell him what we want. What can I do for you, madame? Uh, well, you see, uh, Mr. North's head was hurting so from that crack that he got that I made him lie down. Well, madame? Uh, well... Oh, well, for heaven's sake, Pam, give me the phone. Look, Emil, I want to go to bed. I've got to get to bed. If I don't get to bed soon, I'm going to die. But, monsieur, are you not already in bed? No, I'm not. But Madame said you were lying down. But she didn't tell you where. She didn't tell anyone where. Well, where, monsieur? In your office. My office, monsieur? We're locked in the cafe. Please, Emil, can you come down and let us out? <laughs> Jerry are sure to have more exciting adventures next week. Listen in, won't you? There's always mystery well sprinkled with humor on Mr. and Mrs. North. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. <laughs>